Hi everyone, it's Julie Stern and I just wanted to create this quick video to let you know if you have this book, Tools for Teaching Conceptual Understanding, either the secondary or the elementary version, I wanted to let you know about some free resources um, that you can you have access to to help you get started. So the first thing you want to do is head to my website, it's just a simple blog, edtosavetheworld.com. And when you get to www.edtosavetheworld.com, you'll see that there's a resource tab here. So you click on the resources tab and it's going to pop up all of these resources. And so the first place that I think is, is a good place to start is under this what's called sample unit plans. And so the first one is what we call the unit planning brainstorm. So if you click on that, it can help you to just think about all the ideas that are listed in this book um, as a, a brainstorm. So the first step that I often tell teachers to do when they're trying to move and promote conceptual understanding to promote students' ability to transfer their learning to new situations is to look at their learning outcomes or their standards documents and I, whatever their you know whatever the goals are for the for that particular unit or that particular group of lessons um, to identify the concepts and usually those are the nouns. Um, any words that we use to organize or categorize our world, just highlight them all, circle them all, and then you start to sort of sort them, which are the most important organizing ideas that I want students to understand as a result of this unit of study. So once you do that, you've identified which are the most essential organizing ideas, then you need to plan ways, step two, to foster meaning making of those concepts. And so we have the page numbers in both books, both elementary and secondary, are listed there. Um, for planning ways to foster meaning making of individual concepts. After you've done that, the next step is to get kids to connect those concepts in relationship. And so there's some question stems. Again, we have the page numbers there of where you can find those question stems. You write out some questions where you plug those concepts into those question stems. Finally, uh, we want to think about learning experiences that are going to illuminate the answer to that question and plan for students to articulate the answer to those conceptual questions in their own words using evidence from the context. So whether it's language arts, maybe it's a particular text they're going to be reading that shows the relationship between um, an author's stylistic choices and the, the effect that it has on the reader, for example. Um, maybe for social studies, it's a particular fact-rich content, such as a particular war, a particular conflict, or maybe a particular region that you're studying. For math, maybe it's a really rich mathematical task. And so the piece that's often missing is getting the students to, at the end of that really rich lesson, is to get them to articulate in their own words how those concepts are related. And then the, the other piece that's almost always missing is step five thinking of an additional context, additional um, really rich math problem, uh, an additional text that kids are going to read, an additional situation in social studies, an additional science experiment where this phenomenon is present, and asking students to again refine and deepen their answer to that question that's in step three. And so these are sort of there's a brainstorming unit plan uh, where teachers just say, Julie, how do I get started? I created this just as sort of some simple steps. And you'll see here, once you've completed this brainstorm, you can go to these unit planners. So you can click on the sample unit planners, which are also linked um, on my website. And so it just gives a bunch of uh, disclaimers and some important information that I want you to know while you're reading these. Um, but then there's some sample unit planners that we have kindergarten, English language arts, um, and it goes down. And there's also some, in case you don't teach elementary, because all the ones in this document currently are elementary. We're going to be editing these, but if you, if you, um, teach something other than elementary, you can click here in number four, and there's some more um, that are that extend beyond into high school, middle school, high school, and maybe some different subject areas um, with along with the template that's there. And so finally, I just want you to see that on this unit planning document, there is a link to a blank template. And all of these things you can have access to if you click on file make a copy, then you have your own copy that you can type into. I have to keep them view only because these are shared with people all across the world. Um, but if you click on file at the top of your screen right here, file, and then click make a copy, you can have your own copy that you can type into, that you'll have ownership of and you can type into. That's all I have for you guys today. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.